Hello everybody, and welcome to Skyward Sword. We're trying to make yep. our way through the Lanayru province here. Not province, but the Lanayru desert anyway. Right. Yep, where it's, it's well, it's mixed between sand and grass, really, yeah. It's, I mean, it's sand, but sometimes we manage to uh, go back in time, and then it's grass. I'm and still time. wondering how it all came from grass fields to sand. Uh, there is a video. I can't tell you where to find it, but it's on YouTube. Um, it's not game theory, but it's somebody who did theories yeah, on for, games yeah. and they talked about um, how over a course of a few thousand years something like the um, the the plains area that was Lanayru would have been able to become this massive desert. Well I'm thinking either these, like drought or something. Mm. Yeah, it was something like that. There was some kind of major climate change or something that happened um, and it caused a, uh, a massive... Um, uh, it basically caused the, uh, the land to go bare and stuff. The, there's a video on it on YouTube, oh. I just don't remember. Uh, what it was. So, I could probably uh, research it though. <laughs> oh, I don't know, I kind of want to do something like that, like a theory series or a review series or just like a, uh, um, a series where I talk about like some of my favorite games and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know. I don't know. If well, I always want to. Interested, and I don't want to like copy game theory and. <laughs> Honestly, what I want to do is do let's plays, but have each episode have like a review or a theory or something right. that I can explain or talk about while like, people watch me playing a game. <laughs> right. Yeah, easy, I mean, easy yeah. enough thing to do. Yeah. Sure, I won't have a person to talk to, but it will keep people entertained, in <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> right, definitely. That's an easy enough thing to do, so... Mm -hmm. We just have to decide that's to, to do it. So... Um... Okay, you're in the way, so there must be another time shift stone around here. Mm-hmm. I'm not immediately... Ah, well, I'm if you can see it, then it's at the... Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. It's like, if it's not um, there on the ground floor, then it has to be, like, up high. Right. Yep. I just had to look around a little bit. It's <laughs> under one of these rocks. Not under that one. Yeah, it's one of the things that you generally learn is either um, your the reason why you can't oh. find something is apparently the oh. rupee blew up my bomb. I oh, that's was, weird. I, I thought um, I would pick it up as it went by, but now it just blew it up. But yeah, generally, or from what I learned Yay. from any sort of show is. People really don't notice anything extremely below or extremely high above their uh, line of sight. Yeah. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Mm hmm Yeah. It's called your passive perception. <laughs> mm hmm <laughs> So, yeah. Uh, out of all the things that D&D uh, &D does, I think they have a pretty good skill set that covers most of, if not every, possible thing you could ever need to uh, think about. So, history check, nature check, 
Arcana check. Investigation. Investigation check. I do like the fact that there's an investigation check. Uh, it used to be a search check, but I think investigation <clears throat> makes more sense. Yeah. Some people didn't like investigation because, oh, it's more words for the same thing. It it's, it is not really. Not. Because like investigation you're... and search is completely different because search, yeah, you are searching for a, a, a specific... Well, to me, search is more like searching for a specific item. Investigation is just looking around you with um, anything of interest that you may find. Right. Get the slingshot back out. Boom! Time shift! Whee! Now here comes the fun part. We have to get in, pull our sword, prepare a scoured strike, and blast! Right as we go by. Because you can't get out of the cart into the uh, spot there to get to the goddess cube. So you have to be quick! Not as easy as it uh, looked, that's for sure. But yeah, I admit, even I at first didn't like the fact that they just changed the name, but then I realized actually it makes much more sense to change it. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, I can't imagine um, for some D and D um, players that they don't understand what search mean. Honestly, um, in a way, I rather wish they changed the name for Arcana because you're not t actually detecting magic. Yeah, the 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 problem that Arcana has, and I've seen just about every DM I've ever played with perform the same goof. Arcana is a magical history check. Yeah. It's yeah, not it, a um it's not a uh check to um uh what's the word? Um it, it's a magical history check, it's not a magical detection, you know? Mm -hmm. I swear that I get more than one beacon, but now oh, it must be right now. Information report. This is placing multiple beacons. Now we get the multiple beacons. Yay! Finally. I've only been waiting for this like the entire game practically. <laughs> so I'll run along here. I love how I can just run along these areas without any problems at all. It is great. There and there, I think we're going to go. Let's see. So somewhere along like there. Somewhere along this way. Yay, there we go. That was about right. And then... I can actually just go straight from here. <gasps> yeah, um... Honestly, even our kind of confused me, even... And... I generally end up forgetting... Entirely what Arcana is for. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I'm not surprised that a lot of people regularly forget what Arcana is, because Arcana sounds like it's a, a you know, magic check. Yeah, a, a detection of magic, not you know. Think back on Learning. your history and remember some magical property, you know. So. Yeah, the. It's just said to me, they just haven't found 
um, a word for it yet. Right. I mean, I could give them a word, but it wouldn't be a word. I would just call it arcane history. Yeah. You know? I wouldn't call it arcana, I'd just call it like arcane history or something. Yep. And the problem is, is that all of those types of things are single word um, properties. Turn Link. There we go. Push it in. <laughs> Link would not turn it under any circumstance. <laughs> I'm like, turn Link, turn! Nope. Would not turn under any circumstance. So I just completely ignored the uh, big red X there telling me where to go to uh, learn about these things because I already knew about them. Now then, next one. Next one is in this place. These black lines are all basically submerged paths. There are, yeah, there's a time shift down here. I need bomb flowers. I'm glad I got that bomb flower, the bomb bag <laughs> upgrade, because I can hold what, 25 bomb flowers, yeah. and I am out of bomb flowers. <laughs> yeah. Again, um. This is why you generally wanted to upgrade your stuff before continuing on with the game. Well, I know some players, um, they can't just, they just can't wait till they get to the next portion of the game, which is fine. But honestly, I like the fact that it gets extremely difficult if you don't. Yeah. I mean, some people don't get, like, the upgrades and stuff because of challenge, which is understandable. You know, mm -hmm. if you want a challenge, yeah, by all means, go for it. Do whatever but, the heck you want but, with that. But, but hey, yeah. Hey, bomb flowers! Yay, I need to pick but, these things up. But, <laughs> yeah, if you're the kind of people who complains about how difficult Skyward Sword is, and you don't go for the upgrades, yeah, that's your own fault. Yep. A lot of the upgrades really do help. You they do extremely like so. the shield upgrades. Um juice, yeah, you sort of want that. And the bomb bag upgrades and the seed upgrades. Yeah, you want all of those. Right. It's just that honestly I don't like it when people complain about difficulty when the game allows you to make it easier on yourself. Yep. Like, no point of getting upset over something One, like that. Two, three, four, five. Yay! 25 bomb flowers. That ah, had to be really boring to watch. <laughs> You're just sitting there picking up bomb flowers. No, probably not the most exciting thing, but oh well. I mean, it was necessary, so yep. what can you do? And if you um, do collect um, all to fill up your bag, then yeah, you're just actually saving much more time than it could happen. Yeah. I mean, that's why I picked up 25. I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna pick up a crap ton and then I will know that I have enough to get through everything because I have a literal crap ton of them. Okay, so this, uh, I don't sink in the sand. That's interesting. But I did. Guess not. Uh, apparently it was just across that section. That's probably why I thought you sank. There's only that section that uh, you don't. Oh, there's a time shift stone I'm looking uh, for. Honestly, um, this dungeon I really don't like. This dungeon seems kind of extremely extra. It, it didn't feel like the the dungeon had much point to it. You know. 
Yeah. It, it but... really feels like an extra dungeon that was thrown in just to give the game more weight. More weight, more length. That was one thing I liked about Wind Waker, actually. Like, they didn't give you a dungeon for Great Fish Isle. They just gave you the freaking pearl. Because, I mean, there's uh, only five dungeons, yeah, but, I mean, I'd rather have less dungeons and each one is more meaningful than have, like, 30 dungeons and all of them are tunnels or things like that, you know, things that don't really have any meaning to them, you know? Uh, it's this dungeon feels like just extra, you're going to completely forget about it, and honestly, it's, um, boring and annoying. Yeah, and unfortunately, this dungeon has the feel of it being completely extra, as opposed to something that you actually wanted to do. But seriously, um, this dungeon, I don't really remember much of, um, besides all the other dungeons, really. It's like, uh, why am I doing this dungeon again? Why am I after in here? <laughs> right. I understand that 100%. I mean, of course, I know I had to do it, but really, is there any point to it? <laughs> I will admit that I did not care much for the Lanayru mining facility as a uh, dungeon. I think I'm darn missed. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I think I have it in a bad spot now. <laughs> um, just get off of it and go. Yeah, you're doing it. Oh, missed. Yep. You kind of had to get That's right nice. on target. <laughs> Stay on target. Uh. Ah, that works. I can stab it while it's uh, not electric, and I can just kick it right in there. There it goes! Yeah, works yeah. better. Yeah. I never knew that. I've played through this game three times now. Never knew you could do that. But, uh, <laughs> that works a heck of a lot better than trying to use the thingy to get it in. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I do like the part where you had to stab it and then turn. That is so awesome with the Wii remote. I'm yeah. sorry. That sort of thing is cool. It makes it feel more realistic, I guess, but yeah, and more uh, virtual. Mm. Yeah, I, I liked the the one thing I liked about Skyward Sword, to be completely honest, is the fact that it used motion controls. Um, you know, it wasn't motion controls like in um, Twilight Princess, where it, you know shaking the Wiimote was just a replacement for pushing a button, here the motions you make change what Link does. And that's a really good feeling, like the, um, the uh, Nintendo has actually commented stating that uh, the scene where you draw the goddess sword. Yeah, that feels so amazing. Yeah, really. the, it's the, like you're actually pulling it out. Yeah, they they specifically crafted that scene under the idea of, you know, you, you're drawing out the sword and it's really supposed to feel like that. And it does, too. It really makes you feel like you know, you're drawing the sword out of the, um, the and thing so, at that moment. And so barely any weak games do that. 